my name is Dan Alessandri and welcome to my weekly Ableton course. Um, this is now week eight, so yeah, um, we've only got, including this week, uh, just two more, uh, two more weeks to go of this course. So I'm just waiting for confirmation that uh, you guys can hear me and then we can begin. Yeah, brilliant, sorted. There we go. That didn't take long at all. Excellent. Right, so yeah, welcome to week eight uh, on the Ableton course uh, for the Get Your Act Together project with ClothCat. Here's the information. And uh, yeah, the rest of the week there's loads of other things going on as well. So um, please subscribe to their YouTube channel and uh, you can get uh, updates and notifications to when the other courses are live and yeah, you can learn all this stuff uh, with all the other music tutors. Um, so to begin with, I need to read out the disclaimer. So here we go. So the YouTube disclaimer for the Get Your Act Together project. If you're under 18, tell your parents you're doing this, doing this session. Uh, feel free to ask questions and make comments, but stay safe online by just using your first name. Don't give out your contact details, and I hope you enjoy today's session. Right, so this week uh, and next week, um, we're going to be making a track. So I'm going to basically be building a track from scratch. And um, yeah, so I'll start it off this week. Um, we'll continue it next week. And then on the final week, week 10, um, I will mix it down and do a kind of rough master um, of that mix down. So it's kind of basically taking you through, through the, the process, uh, kind of what like what I do uh, when I produce a track. And um, yeah, obviously this is only gonna be for like two hours, <clears throat> but normally I spend a lot a lot longer writing my tracks. Um, it's just to kind of show you the, the quick kind of um, basics of how I put some of my tracks together. And along the way, I'll be showing you some of my tips and tricks um, that I use to kind of, yeah, make my tracks sound pretty cool. So yeah, to begin with, um, let's load up Ableton. Um, so for this, I will be using, I have got a, uh, a MIDI keyboard um, that I use. And um, yeah, so for that, I'm gonna be programming in some drums, some melodies and chords, different ideas. Um, you can use, use a launch pad if you've got a launch pad. And um, up until now, I've pretty much done everything using the computer keyboard. So using uh, the keyboard in front of me here. Um, so yeah, um, I advise uh, to try and get hold of a MIDI keyboard if you can, or some drum pads, or uh, like a launch pad or an Ableton push. Um, if you can't, then uh, for now, yeah, just use your computer keyboard and we'll be absolutely fine with that, so yeah. Okay, so um, uh, the way that I'm going to approach this um, might be how I begin some tracks. It might not be. Um, it all depends. So every time I produce a track, uh, my approach is, is pretty different, you could say. Um, it might be that I come across like a sample and I get that into the software or I get it into my MPC Live and chop it up and do something cool with the sample, and that's like my starting point. I might um, get an idea in my head, uh, might be walking around somewhere, and a little idea pops in my head, and then I record it on my phone voice recorder, and then when I get back into the studio, I um, work out what notes I was singing, and then that's how I begin. I don't know, the bass line or the melody, kind of go from there. I might just jam out a few chords on a piano and um, write a melody and a drum beat around those chords, something like that. Um, I might just start writing a beat. I might come across uh, a cool beat or something and use that as a bit of inspiration. It really varies. Um, and there's no kind of right or wrong way. Uh, whatever works for you, um, just go with it. Yeah, um, get in the zone, get creative and get making music, that's the most important thing. Um, and it's great, yeah, once you kind of get on a get on a roll when you start producing your track and um, time just disappears, you have no idea <laughs> what else is existing outside of your, your headphones or your speakers or your little studio space. 
and um, it's great fun. I absolutely love doing it, and it's kind of it's quite addictive when you kind of get making a track and you keep wanting to go back to it, or you keep kind of listening to it again and again. It's great fun. So yeah, um, so yeah, just to kind of make that point. Um, but yeah, usually I spend a lot longer writing my tracks. Normally I spend I don't know maybe a few hours or something on each track. So that might be spread out over a few days or even a few weeks. I might start something, work on it every night for a few hours. Um, or I might start something off, send it over to one of my mate, well, my mate Rick, get him to kind of carry on working on it. He'll send it back and we'll bounce it back, back and forth until we're both happy with it. Um, so yeah, just find whatever's gonna be the best way for you to kind of get making music, get creative, um, yeah, and make some tunes, which is great. So this week, um, I'm going to be focusing on um, programming in my drums. Um, we'll write some chords, and then from those chords, we'll write a bass line. And uh, I think that should pretty much cover everything for this week. And then next week, I'll be looking at more um, adding some synths, synth lines, kind of uh, build-up effect sounds, drop effect sounds, um, maybe some more percussion, and yeah, just kind of bring together the track. But yeah, today we're focusing on drums and bass and some chords. We'll get down the, the, the kind of the chords that we're going to be using in the track. Um, so what does really help, and um, I do this a lot of the time, I might hear a song and I'm like, I really like that song, I'd like to write something similar, um, is to kind of get a guide track into your session. Um, so I'm just going to use one of my own tracks. Um, I'm not going to play it, I just want to kind of show you um, what it kind of looks like, so the, what the waveform looks like, and then from that we can um, work out a rough kind of structure. So you don't have to kind of copy the track, it's good to kind of get an idea of the arrangement of a piece of music. Um, so yeah, just drag and drop that in, find your track, drag and drop it in, find the beginning. Uh, I've shown you all about warping uh, over the last few weeks. So yeah, get the track in, warp it from there, and then, um, yeah, if I just kind of bring it up so you can see a little bit better. Is it going to be better in that view? Uh, let's do it in this view. Um, let's make it so you can see it a little bit more. There you go. So um, a lot of the tracks that I write um, are what I call DJ friendly. So they're kind of being produced for the DJs to use. So um, what tends to happen is um, the first 30 seconds uh, or the first... Um, Kind of 32 bars um, or up to like a, a minute normally normally a minute or half a minute is kind of standard length for an introduction and then about half a minute to a minute uh, is the outro um, so you can kind of see here from the audio file here the waveform there's the time at the bottom so at one minute that's where it kind of goes into a breakdown you can see that because the waveform isn't as high it's not as kind of big, it hasn't been um, kind of uh, brought as loud as it would go because it's getting a bit quieter there. And then if I zoom in a little bit more, let's go along to the next section. There's a little break here, a little break there. And then there's the kind of the main breakdown here. And then the drop here around kind of five minutes. And then you get your outro, which is the end. So that's how um, you can kind of compare uh, will refer to like a guide track um, if it's something along the lines of the sort of style that you want to use it's kind of good just to keep in there you can refer back to it and then you can kind of hear okay what sort of ideas do they use in their tracks I'm not saying uh, totally rip off another track but it's good just to kind of have something to refer to as you're going along especially as you're starting out this is also quite helpful for when you come to mix down your tracks that you can have a kind of guide track and um, yeah I mean you can kind of compare your waveform, how big your waveform is, to the professionally mastered track. That's quite a good way of doing it. So yeah, uh, stick a guide track, stick it at the top of your session, and then um, you can minimize it. You don't actually have to have it there. And then you can refer to it as you go along. Okay, so first things first, as always, um, let's get some, let's get some chords. Should we do some chords first? Now let's get a basic beat. Okay, so in this view, um, let's program in some beats. So I found a drum kit um, within the drums. Let's see if I can find it down here. I've 
I think I saved it in one of my course folders. Okay, this quark kit was quite cool. So let's drag and drop that in. And now using my MIDI keyboard, make sure you arm your track at the bottom. Nice. Okay. And um, because that's armed, we can start recording straight away. So I'm just going to write a, a basic kick and snare for kind of four bars and we'll just kind of work from there. And uh, at the moment we're at 120, so let's put it up a little bit. Let's go to one, two, four. That's a good kind of tempo that I like to write up. Um, I'm gonna make a more kind of housey bass track, like a four to the floor house track. And um, yeah, that's what I produce. That's mainly the kind of style that I produce. So um, yeah, let's go with this. And um, let's get the metronome going as well. So we've got something to kind of refer to. So before I record, let's just see if I can jam out a few bars. Um, mute that, we don't wanna hear that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so hit record this time. Might be a little bit loud, let's turn that down. And then let's have a quick look at the MIDI. There we go. And um, if you look at one of my previous, well, one of my first videos I did as part of this course, I'm just going to quantize um, these uh, beats here. Okay, that's cool. Um, so let's, that's going to be our kind of first introduction, you could say. And I'm just going to quickly duplicate that. And I'm going to take the metronome off. And then let's see what, let's see what else we can add in. Let's have a see what that sounds like over the top. Okay, so let's have a go at recording that over. And um, if I hit the this button here, it will record um, and it will kind of let me overdub. So let's try that. Quickly quantize that as we go along. Um, there we go, that shifted those. One second. That sounds better there. Okay, let's try that now. So I'm just going to record uh, that over the top, duplicate that, and just layer that uh, another kind of snare over the top of there. So make sure that's armed. That's the one we were recording over the top of. Cool, make sure that's quantized. There we go. And let's see what other, what other sounds we can add. Mm. Okay, let's duplicate that and stick that over the top. So you just see every time I'm kind of starting off and then adding uh, layer by layer, bit by bit.
Let's undo that, let's do something else. So let's do let's try that and one more time. No, I don't like that. So you just have to sometimes keep going over and over till you get it right. Cool. Oh, not that section there. Yeah, let's select all that and then quantize that. There we go. And let me see if I can find one more sound to go in there. it now. Where did he go? Cool. Okay. So we've got like a basic kind of beat in there. And um, the final one that I want to do is a kind of um, a faster kind of 16 hi-hat rhythm over the top. Let's go to this bottom one here. And um, this time, I'm just going to kind of duplicate it and um, do it actually within the MIDI instead of kind of playing it in myself. Let's zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to make this one a little bit faster. Oh, let's make that a bit shorter. That was overlapping a bit. There we go. Let's just copy that rhythm across the whole of a part. And just quickly draw around it, highlight it, and then duplicate it. There we go. Cool. Um, just check everything's all right on there. Nice. Cool. Um, okay, so. Um, well, another really, really important tip is uh, make sure you save your work. It sounds obvious. Um, oh, so if you just go up to your file, um, save life set as, and then let's just put this as in my Ableton projects. Um, get your act together, track, demo. There we go. So now that's saved. And then as I just quickly do a collect all and save as well. Um, the collect all and save is... Um, Quite handy if you've got lots and lots of different samples within your project, it just saves, puts them all in that, that folder and saves them there for you. Okay, so now um, the final one I'm going to put in, um, tell you what I'm going to do, I'm going to move that down and then I'm just going to duplicate one of these. And um, I'm just going to take out some of these because this will be our kind of little, our first little breakdown. So let's just take. Um, take out the kick. Okay, so this will be our little breakdown, and then we'll drop, jump back into this little bit here. One, two, three, and... Okay, cool. So we've got um, the kind of build up. I'm just gonna change uh, this one, slightly different color blue, just so I know that that is the kind of breakdown one. I mean, at any point I could jump back to that, just kind of looking at that. Cool, okay, so next, um, let's try some chords. So, uh, for the chords, I'm just going to grab a piano, like a grand piano sound, go to your sounds, and you should have a grand piano in there. This, uh, if you go to the piano and keys section, that's where you'll find it. So go to grand piano and just kind of drag and drop that in. Okay, so now... 
Um, so just to point out here, uh, unfortunately, um, I won't be able to kind of teach you how to play the piano or teach you much kind of music theory. Um, I strongly rec uh, recommend watching Matty's um, program, uh, sorry, his course uh, as part of his project, and he will go through all of that with you. I'm pretty sure that he's covering most of those topics. So um, I've been playing piano since about the age of like seven and eight, seven or eight. Um, so I just tend to, uh, my, my music theory, I, I have got grade five theory, but um, at the end of the day, I just write things. I can play a few chords, but I just write things that I like the sound of. And you know, I've kind of used that uh, philosophy, you could say. So if it does sound good, I tend to use it in my project. So um, I'm not entirely sure what I'm playing half the time, but it sounds good, so I'll use it. So um, let's just see if we can come up with a couple of chords and then we'll record those in. We might not actually keep the chords in the end track, but it's a good kind of way to, to begin with, um, just to kind of get a few notes that sound good, a couple of chords, a couple of progressions, and um, we can use those in the project. And then uh, we might take them away. We might use them again, or we might use them in different ways, but I'll show you that. Okay, so let's um, jam out a couple of chords. Um, I tend to write things in a minor key, um, but then occasionally switch to a major chord every now and again, um, just to kind of, yeah, mix things up a bit. But yeah, if it sounds good, I'll use it. Okay, so I've got a couple of chords there, that sounds quite nice. So we've kind of got an F minor chord there. And then... So the, the track will, the kind of root chord, the kind of root note will be a, an F. Um, so that's what we'll kind of probably write our bass line in because that in that note the F is in both of the chords there. So just to tell you the notes that I'm playing there, so I'm playing an F, G sharp and a C and the middle C and then it goes up to the F, the B flat and then a D. So we could kind of go And then sometimes it's nice to kind of put the, the higher note, the F, um, at the top as well. And then you can kind of keep going up and play the same chord or a couple of notes from the same chord at the top. And that often sounds quite nice. Let's stick to those. Let's get those recorded in. So let's find it, which is one which has got a nice Nice beat there, cool. And then let's just record these in. Cool. Um, it's gonna take this track out, we're not using that anymore. I think that might be affecting things. programs down sounds a little bit glitchy in my ears so yeah I've seen any ones we need okay so looking at the chords um, again I'm going to quantize them just because I like things nice and in time oops
Yeah, that seems a little bit off there, so let's just move those over. Okay, yeah, so we'll just stick to those two chords for now. So um, I'm going to probably put that down here because um, it'd be quite nice to kind of have that in the little breakdown section, I think. Okay, so we've got a couple of chords. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll keep that in there for now. Um, let's use that as a as a basis for um, the kind of other notes that we're going to be using, like the bass line and stuff in there. Um, so next, um, let's get the the bass line in there. So let's choose. Um, so when I kind of write um, this sort of music, um, what I tend to do uh, with the bass, I kind of have a a, a nice lower end subby bass as a kind of rolling sound just to kind of sit alongside the drum the drum uh, drum beat drum kit and the kick drum and then now I might have a kind of um, well I will probably have like a more kind of low mid ranged bass line um, more like a synthy kind of sound so we'll find a kind of low bass and we'll use that as the rolling one and then we'll add another one which will be kind of the, the more punchier one you could say so we're not using any order at the moment. So let's just find, uh, where was the sound? Um, let's have a look in the folder here, which was the bass one I was using. Um, bass floor. Yeah, let's try that one. Okay. So for this, I'm using the kind of lower octaves, much lower down um, on the keyboard, because I want that kind of subby, subby sound. And then let's just turn the frequency down. So you can hear it's kind of a lot more kind of sub bass. So if you were listening to this on a big club sound system or somewhere which had a sound system with a subwoofer, um, you'd kind of, yeah, you'd feel it in your belly. That's the kind of the aim of that sound. Um, and that alongside the drums is uh, the kind of rhythmic section of uh, the track. So that is the what I like to think that's the bit that gets your head moving, that gets your body dancing, um, yeah, your drums and your bass. What I'll do, I'll just turn the frequency up so you can hear it a little bit better and then um, I'll turn it back down again. So let me just check what the chords were. And I always find it's quite nice to kind of have, um, try and make it a little bit syncopated your bass, kind of put a bit of a groove on it. So sometimes you might not start on the first beat of the bar, you might kind of start on the second beat or kind of halfway, um, half a bar, uh, sorry, half a beat in, uh, just to kind of give it a bit of a, a bit more groove. So let's hear what it sounds like with uh, the, the piano as well. So yeah, um, for this one, I'm just gonna have the, the F as a kind of tonic rolling uh, bass line. So let's get that in there next. Okay, uh, let's get that quantized. Okay, cool, so now we've got our kind of rolling bass. Um, and let's turn the frequency down a little bit. Um, this one, it happens. Turn it 
take a second to load in. So we might let's take the piano out, see what it sounds like without the piano. Yeah, something's glitching on here a little bit, but we'll keep going. Okay, so let's find a kind of nicer, say nicer, a different kind of more mid-range kind of bass sound that we can use in there. So let's uh, go back to our sounds. Go to your bass. Let's find something a bit, a bit dirtier. Let's try that one, that sounds pretty cool. So I can drop that in there. Okay, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah, it's quite quite a simple kind of bass uh, bass line to go along with it. Um, let's see how that sounds in there then. Size it. Um, just zoom in a little bit more on there and um, maybe move that over. Straighter there, let's move that over. Yeah, duplicate that, move it over, and see what that sounds like. Okay, that's cool. Um, let's just get that saved. Um, so, next, let's start structuring our sound. So, we've got our kind of our our beat here, um, some chords. Um, we've got a subby bass and a more of a kind of mid, mid section bass on there. Um, so yeah, let's just kind of introduce each part by part, and then we can kind of start building our track up. So let's start from the beginning, and then let's add the subby bass. Let's move that over so it's next to it. Um, then. I quite liked having this. Yeah, let's keep that going for there for now. And then, um, what was that beat doing? Okay, so we can use that in there. And then we're going to introduce that. We'll have the chords in there. And then we'll have the bass. And this is going to be our kind of our drop here, this bottom line here. Um, and what I'm going to do. I'm going to kind of um, using uh, this synth down here. I'm going to kind of filter it in, so we can start off with the sound. 
Let's just solo that. So I'm just going to, I will um, automate the frequency here um, on the EQ. So then we kind of go into that breakdown, it will kind of start off quite high and then it kind of filter down and then we'll get our drop, which will sound pretty cool. Um, doo -doo -doo. So yeah, I'm just going to record it in for now and then after um, we can automate it. So yeah, um, with the structure, uh, like I said at the beginning, um, every eight bars, so you've got to kind of think of it um, within your tracks that at this tempo, every eight bars something changes. So kind of something is added or something is taken away. And uh, because this music is progressive, um, and yeah, when it when you come to DJ uh, with your tracks, um, ideally you're bringing in your next track at the beginning of a new eight bar phrase. And uh, it should all make musical sense because all the other tracks do that. So um, it will all make musical sense when you're kind of using it for your, for your DJ in your mixes and things. So. So let's uh, let's get it recorded in. So you can see over here, I've hit record, and everything's going to be recorded in. Oh, why are we starting back? Let's go back to the beginning. Let's try that again. So are we ready? Um, I tend to just have that armed at the beginning. Um, we don't need to. That doesn't need to be armed. We don't need to record anything there. And everything that I click in here, I'm going to be pressing these master play buttons down here. So after every eight bars. I'll be triggering the next kind of row of clips. This is our kind of first eight bars. Keep your eye on the clock. And let's introduce the bass and the next drums. And the next one. Make this a little bit longer here. And here we go. And this is going to kind of be the first drop. and so on. Okay, so that's the kind of the introduction to our track and you can kind of see everything's in here now. So let's quickly hit save and then um, click the orange button at the top and it will reveal everything here. So with those chords, uh, I don't want them in there yet. Let's chuck them down um, a, bit, a little bit further in the track. Um, like I said, I might not even use this, uh, these chords at all. Let's move this up here. And um, yeah, so we're going to automate. Um, yeah, let's have that bass carrying on. And uh, when I was listening to it, it, kind of I felt that the bass, the lower bass, kind of maybe needed to go um, up uh, a couple of the notes. So as the this bass underneath moves up, I think it would be nice. Let's have a look. What does it go up to? So it kind of starts off on the F, and then it goes up to the the B flat. So with this here. Um, when does it do it? After, after two bars. 
So after two bars here, I'm going to shift this up and then it goes back down. So let's put it on there, so let's see what it sounds like. Yeah, let's put those up as well. Yeah, that sounds better like that. So that, does it do it twice? No, actually because it's a loop, it's copied it across. So let's just copy that, copy that over. Okay, and then just quickly, I'm gonna go nip over to um, the bass here. So I want to automate this bass sound here. So I want it to start off. We'll start it from there, and then it will kind of filter sweep down. So um, it's this frequency here that we are automating. See if I can automate, I can't do it on there. So right click, and then click show automation, switches over to there, and then hey presto, it has shown me the automation line here. So let's have that, the kind of filter down from there. Let's have it start off up that high, and then we're going to filter down. Um, let's do it up to like there, and then we're going to filter back up, and then on the drop, it will go back down again. So let's uh, filter this kind of down, back up, and then. Let's have it filtering down. I'm going to click another dot over here as a kind of reference so I can remember where that was. And go down. Um, yeah, and we'll stay down for now. So where's this one? 107. That one's 107. So how does this sound? And then it will start filtering down. Tell you what, let's move that over and then at the end. And then when we get the drop, we get that nice kind of beat coming in there. Um, another little tip that I've kind of learned over the years, um, just before you get your drop, it's nice just to kind of have a fraction of silence. So you just kind of take out um, whatever comes in just before. So here it's that snare. Uh, so is it a hi-hat or a wood sound? Let's take it off of there. And then Let's take off that last bass note. Let's make that one last a bit longer. So it's on the C. I can't hear. And then we can just quickly do a quick cheeky. Nice. Okay. There we go. So let's see what this sounds like now. Let's take that off. Okay, so I'm just gonna um, do a quick cheat. Um, I can make these build up sounds. If you look at, back at one of my earlier videos um, around this kind of synthesis, you can um, make your own kind of build up sounds. But because we are time limited, um, let's stick this at the bottom. 
I'm just going to grab a kind of a build up effect sound um, just to kind of work with for now. So what should we use? Let's use um, not an impact. We kind of want a, a riser. Let's have a look. Atmosphere, riser. Here we go. There's some risers. That's got to be a bit low. Whoa. Um, glitch, impact, riser. Is there any in F? No. That's a nice one. It's like a noisy one. So you, you could use, yeah, like an LFO uh, on a synth, um, on a kind of sine wave or some like kind of white noise. So this one here is kind of a bit more white, white noisy. Um, let's just turn that down a little bit. And then let's get a, um, a kind of drop sound as well. Like a impact, there we go. More impact here. Let's try that one in there. So as soon as you hear the end of this here, um, it will go into that impact sound. And let's turn that down a bit, because no doubt it will be too loud. And, oh, where did it go? And you can do this with like a, like a reverse symbol and then have a kind of, the, reverse a symbol first and then um, so you kind of get the tail build up and then on the on the drop uh, on the first beat of the bar you have your symbol sound or you might have a kind of effectsy symbol type sound okay that's a bit loud turn that down and then Let's cut that to about uh, to there. Cool. There we go. Um, I might. I don't. Didn't like that actually. Let's take that out. So yeah, trial and error. Sometimes things sound good. Um, and you notice that um, when we do get the drop, we've got our 16 kind of beat in there, um, which I think is quite good to kind of use to kind of get people dancing. Um, it's a kind of good, kind of quicker rhythm to kind of get people moving, I find, um, when writing this sort of, this sort of music. Um, okay, so we're doing for time. Right, I think we will have to leave it for there for now. So just to kind of recap, we have programmed in our drums. Um, we've got a, a chord basis to kind of use. Um, we've got a bass line, a subby bass line, a uh, more kind of mid-ranged bass line, which has got some automation and some sweeps, filter sweeps on there. And then we've got kind of build up sound as well. So we've kind of got the introduction to our track. Um, it goes, where does the drop happen? Yeah, so it's about one minute. So at one minute, that's when we kind of go to our first kind of breakdown and then the drop goes in there. So um, we will progress this next week. I'm going to pad this out a little bit more um, and then we'll add some of the other sounds. So we'll structure this, these basic ideas, and then, um, yeah, we can add some other, other synth sounds, um, some other kind of um, nice, nice sounds to put on top, um, which will bring the track together. Um, and yeah, I think we'll be absolutely fine. So yeah, I'm to save your project. Um, and yeah, keep working on your tracks, everyone. Okay, um, let me check if we've got any questions. No, no questions. So, okay, that's all good. Okay, so uh, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Uh, keep your eyes out for my weekly top tip. Um, I'm probably gonna be looking at um, drum fills and tell you what we'll do a let's make our own build up sound in there as well 
um, a more used app. So yeah, um, I'll drop that into the session next week and we can use that. Okay, brilliant. Thank you for watching. Take care.